Chapter 1 Vishad Yoga Yoga of Despair Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjaya, what did my sons and the sons of Pandudu, as they assembled at the sacred Kurukshetra, eager to fight? The Bhagavad Gita appears in the Bhishma Parva of the Hindu scripture Mahabharata. Its 700 verses make up only one chapter in the world's longest epic. Amid romance, political intrigue and war, Dharma, the path of righteousness, is woven throughout the fabric of Mahabharata. The Bhagavad Gita brings to light the very essence of this Dharma, Prema Dharma, the Dharma of Love. The first chapter of the Gita introduces the reader to the historical setting in which Krishna and Arjuna's sacred conversation, which constitutes the balance of the Gita, will take place. Chariots are drawn in military array and war is now inevitable. The fratricental clash that the Mahabharata has been leading to is beyond stopping. The sons of Dhritarashtra, led by Duryodhana, are on one side. The sons of Dhritarashtra's deceased brother, Pandu, led by Yudhishthira, on the other. Dhritarashtra was blind from birth. Yet the sage Vyasa offered to give him eyes to witness the battle. How unsightly the battle was to be is clear from Dhritarashtra's refusal of Vyasa's offer. Indeed, Dhritarashtra, his attachment for Duryodhana blinding him to justice, was instrumental in this unfortunate turn of events. Had his sense of justice not been overruled by material attachment for his son, the battle might have been avoided. As overtly unbecoming as Dhritarashtra's role was, it gave Krishna the opportunity to speak about the nature of attachment, its consequences, detachment, knowledge and the ultimate love of God. From the great evil of fratricental war based on selfish desire, the greatest good emerges. The Bhagavad Gita takes us on a religious and spiritual journey from selfishness to selflessness in love of God. Through an exhaustive comparative analysis, Krishna brings his disciple and dear friend Arjuna, one of the sons of Maharaja Pandu, to the path of devotion. Pandu's eldest son, Yudhishthira, was the rightful heir to the throne. Because Dhritarashtra was blind, he was not chosen to be the king. It is said that the father is born again as his son. Accordingly, Dhritarashtra desired that his son Duryodhana assume the throne, rather than the eldest son of Pandu. One meaning of the name Dhritarashtra is he by whom the kingdom is held. As this name indicates, Dhritarashtra tried to hold the kingdom for himself. His attachment to his son fueled Duryodhana's enmity towards the Pandavas, by which Duryodhana lived up to his infamous name. First, one meaning of the name Duryodhana is dirty fighter. In the Mahabharata, Ashram, Vasika, chapter 1, 
Duryodhan is described as a particular incarnation of Kali, the personification of evil who presides over the present age, Kali Yuga. In this verse, the fire of Duryodhana's enmity is about to burst into the blaze of a full-scale war. Tritarashtra, aware of his own part in the freckle, yet too attached to stop his son, is anxious to know what is happening as the armies assemble. Vyasa blessed his disciple Sanjaya that even though not personally present on the battlefield, he would mystically know every nuance of the war, including the minds of those involved. Footnote 2. See Mahabharata Bhishma Parva 2.4. At Vyasa's request, Sanjaya, whose name indicates that he was all Sam, victorious, Jaya, and thus master of his own mind and senses, agreed to narrate the events to the blind and aging Dhritarashtra from within the palace compound. Knowing well that Dharma was on the side of the Pandavas, Dhritarashtra refers to the battlefield in terms of its sacred heritage. The earliest references to the sacredness of Kurukshetra are found in the Jabala Upanishad and the Shatapata Shruti. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, Avatara Parashurama performed sacrifices at Kurukshetra. Its sacredness brought Krishna's father Vasudeva there during the solar eclipse. Vasudeva also performed sacrifices in Kurukshetra on that occasion. As we shall see, the extent of its sacredness exceeds these well-known histories. In this verse, Dhritarashtra's voice is filled with doubt. He realized there was little hope that his sons would prevail. Perhaps, he thought, the piety of the Pandavas combined with the influence of Kurukshetra will cause the Pandavas to walk away from the battle, giving victory to Duryodhana by default. However, the Pandavas were more than pious. They were intimate devotees of Krishna and thus transcendentalists of the highest order. Moreover, Kurukshetra was far more sacred than Tritarashtra realized. Its sanctity is brought out by the devotional mystics of the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition in their commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam. Jiva Goswami details the chronology of events leading to Krishna's first coming to Kurukshetra in his treatise on the Bhagavatam, Krishna Sandarbha. At the age of 50, Krishna came to Kurukshetra with his royal entourage from Dwaraka. The secret purpose of this pilgrimage was to meet with the villagers and in particular the cowherd girls, gopis of Raja, the rural setting of his youth. He wanted to assure the Raja devotees that he loved them and that, although he was living outside of Raja in his high society, he was thinking of them constantly. After Krishna had killed the evil king Kamsa, he feared that those who sought to avenge his death would cause havoc in Raja, whose residents were unequipped to deal with a military invasion. As Krishna established Dharma throughout the land, he did so with his Raja devotees in mind. 
in separation from him for over one hundred years, with only one brief and somewhat awkward meeting here at Kurukshetra, his devotees of Raja never swayed in their love for him. Separation made their hearts grow founder in the same way that it made Krishna's heart grow founder for them. Now, more than 50 years after his brief meeting with them at Kurukshetra, Krishna was once again setting foot in this holy place, and he was reminded of his previous meeting here with the gopis. When Krishna met previously with the inhabitants of Raja at Kurukshetra, he had a private meeting with the gopis, who loved him more than their own lives. How great must their necessity have been at that time. They were again with Krishna, yet he was in princely dress. His peacock feather crown had been replaced with royal jewels, his sweetness covered by majesty. He invited them to join him, but owing to the circumstances, they could not. They loved Krishna, the cowherd, but now in Kurukshetra, he appeared before them as a prince. He used to herd cows barefoot in the forest of Raja, but now he was riding an elephant. He used to hold a flute in his two hands, but as a prince he sometimes appeared four-handed. The gopis could not join him in the big city of Dwaraka. Being simple village girls, they did not know how to act in high society, nor were they interested in being his queens. They longed for the full moon nights of Raja, and the Krishna who was fully theirs in paramour love. Without the forests of Raja, the river Yamuna, Krishna's friends and cows, all of which created an atmosphere conductive to the highest love, the gopis could not be satisfied even in Krishna's presence. They did not go with him to be members of his royal assembly, but in effect, he went with them, promising them that he would soon return to Raja and telling them that in the meantime they should know that he was theirs alone. Although he physically returned to Dwaraka, his heart went with the gopis to Raja. Here in this place, Kurukshetra, Krishna admitted that Radha's devotion to him had conquered him. Footnote 3. See Srimad Bhagavatam 10.82.44. This verse is cited three times in Chaitanya Charitamrita, wherein its most esoteric significance is revealed. See also the Srimad Bhagavatam commentaries of Sanatana Goswami and Vishwanatha Chakravarti Thakur. This is the height of Dharma, Sri Radha's love, Prema Dharma. What is Dharma? It is that by which God is pleased. Footnote 4. See Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.13. So pleased Krishna was by the gopi's devotion that he bowed to it. Although the paramour, parakya love of the gopis for Krishna is in reality a mystic illusion owing to the fact that they are his potencies, shaktis, and thus belong, svakya, to him alone, it nonetheless brings the greatest rapture to Krishna. As Dharma consists of that which is pleasing to God and is judged by the measure of his pleasure, 
Radha's paramour love constitutes the highest dharma. Thus, this mystic illusion of her paramour relationship with Krishna is quite real, and the devotion of the Raja Gopis is the full expression of dharma, the height of eostatic rapture. The queen of this rapture is Radha, and accordingly service to her is most pleasing to Krishna. How great was her necessity at Kurukshetra! She came so close to reuniting with Krishna, but could not. Value is determined by necessity. At the hour of Radha's greatest necessity, even the most insignificant service rendered to her draws immerse remuneration. Such is the value of devotion to Radha at Kurukshetra. As he pondered the king's question, Sanjaya collected himself to answer Tritarashtra. He knew that Krishna would speak about Dharma from beginning to end. Thus, Kurukshetra is Dharmakshetra, the field of moral and spiritual values. Anyone who stands here must take a stand on matters, good and evil, spiritual and material. In replying to Tritarashtra's query concerning the outcome of the meeting between his son Duryodhana and the Pandavas, Sanjaya wanted to let him know that there was considerable cause for concern, even though Duryodhana was politically astute. He thus indicated that the military arrangement of the Pandavas was formidable. 